Dragon! There's a dragon! Get to the dragon shelter, you fools! Hi, it's William Dimmick Johnson, and today's topic is, you guessed it, dragons. We did dungeons yesterday, we're going to do dragons today. And we're going to visit the old first edition dragon, specifically the black dragon. Here we are, a first edition Dungeon Dragons Monster Manual. 1980s cover art, and we skip through a few pages. Try not to pause. Ah, oh, here we are, the Black Dragon. Look at them. Look at that lovely piece of work. And if we can get on to the stats. Uh, we can see he has six to eight hit dice, which means for an adult Black Dragon, he's going to be rocking five hit points per level. And we go down to his attacks. Don't know if you can see that. Okay, he gets one to four, one to four. So his claws are striking like daggers. And three to 18. 3d6 for that bite. And of course, he has a breath weapon. So he can do up to 35 hit points per, per breath attack. And he probably gets to breathe three times a day on you with his nasty acid. And that's your black dragon. He goes for about... Ooh, that's the section of the page. About, a about half of one column of a page. Good on you, Black Dragon. So, if you're rocking out there in AD&D, first edition, what is your Black Dragon good for? Well, he's a handy, appropriate accounter for five, fifth to sixth level adventurers. If you send fourth level adventurers after him, he's probably going to eat them all. And he's definitely going to just dissolve with the first third level adventurers. Fifth to sixth level adventurers, a few hirelings, few henchmen, party of six to eight, because party sizes were bigger back then. They could totally go black dragon hunting once they hit fifth level. They definitely do it once they hit sixth level. Someone's going to die, but someone's always going to die in AD&D. &D. You know, there's all those creatures out there with death saving throws. And Save versus death! Arr. So you can, a dragon is a terrible monster in AD&D, &D, and they only get a little tougher. Um, black dragons are your second tier dragons, white dragons are wimpier, but it's really, <laughs> once you deal with white dragons, they're incredibly silly creatures, they breathe cold, and they found out of wildernesses, they're not terribly interesting, you might see them as frost giant pets if you play against the giants beyond that they are so dragons are nasty monsters they are, but they are things you can hunt they are things you can go out and you can get that treasure type h off that black dragon set yourself up for a few months and all you gotta do is plan organize get a few guys out there with extra few extra crossbow bolts so you can put them in do that 2d fat two to five points of damage per crossbow shot and get a few of those raining down the dragons so you sort of entice, somehow entice it out of this lair. Hobbits, probably. Always entice dragons with hobbits. Hobbits are delicious. And you can go kill that dragon, get its skin for armor, get all the other trophies, and get the loot. Dragons, after all, are not particularly complicated. Monsters of this edition AD&D. They're just another big, bad, tough beastie. Now, but that is good. You can have tough beasties. You can have nasty challenges. And they're, but, yeah, they are just a horrible monster. And they are to be put down. Now, well, let's look at its great great grandchild, the 5th edition Black Dragon. And here we have the 5th edition Monster Manual. Oh, yes. What a lovely fellow on the front. And then we go through and we look for dragons. Oh, here we are. Well, the last set of dragons were on page 36. We're up to page 48. We're still on Demi Liches. They must be soon. Oh, he's all the devils. Oh, how many devils do you need? Ah, oh, Drago Lich. Oh, he must be close. Ah, the black dragon. He starts on page 87. We've got the Sea Hags in the first edition of Monster Manual, but don't mind that. And this is the this is what a black dragon looks like, and that's an 
Here are the sets for an Ancient Black Dragon, which is not terribly interesting, pertinent. But here is the Adult Black Dragon. He had 35 hit points. Before, what's he got now? 195. Almost six times as many. Or five, six times as many. And he's got seven crews and abilities and all. He's got his amphibious. Oh, they make that clear. And here are his attacks. Clawing. They claw you. What do they do? 2d6 plus 6 slashing damage. Yow. That is like a great sword into the head. We'll step up from those daggers. And that bite. What's the bite doing? 2d10 plus 6. Plus some acid, plus acid damage. Ugh. Oh, not much more of an upgrade there, but still, what do you mean? And he is challenge rating 14. Meaning you should be sending 14th level characters up against him. So, what does that tell us about your 5th edition adult Black Dragon? Aside from it has a lot more hit points. And hits a lot harder with its claws and... It's a whole lot of other abilities. Oh, look, it had legendary abilities as well. I've got those. It totally has legendary abilities too, which are pretty cool things. What it tells us is that dragons and your later editions of D and D are not things you go and casually hunt after you've braved a few dungeons and maybe had a wilderness adventure or two. And because if you're fifth level, <laughs> that loud up bright dragon will eat you. Hey. You will probably go down and you won't hit the sides. See, he's one mean machine. He's 195 hit points. You're not going to get through that and before it gets through you. And of course, party size has been smaller these days, and you tend not to have all that army of henchmen and hirelings around. It's going to be a tough fight. <laughs> a horrible fight, even at level 14. He's going to rip into you. He's probably got spells, too probably rocking, I don't know, it's probably rocking as a 10th level sorcerer as well, who knows, but it tells us things about the new improved modern dragon, they are not just a big apex predator out in the wild somewhere, they're probably a boss monster, <laughs> they're probably one of your main villains in your campaign, he will have minions, he will have flunkies, he will have Probably entire regions under his thrall. Because he's tough enough to take take that stuff and hold it and murder anyone who doesn't agree. So he's going to be a major villain in your game. He's going to be a major threat. You should introduce him. That traditional Darth Vader gambit. Have him show up and terrorize something in the first scene. Or the second scene. And then fly off again having done his evil thing. And then the rest... A major focus of the rest of the campaign can be dealing with the damage that dragon does and trying to stop him, trying to bring peace and order to your kingdom or village or barony or whatever you've got. And eventually, after much trial and adventures and side quests and everything else, you can go and try and take him on when you've hit level 13 or 14. And then you can sort of hope that he doesn't murder you as then as well, because uh, they're tough. They're mean, but they are... Apex monsters, they are top. But one of the problems I have with them is that, well, you can't just start off in D&D &D anymore and after a few sessions, go fight a dragon. I mean, that was totally the intent of AD&D. &D, was, you know, you go down in some dungeons, you fight some orcs, you meet that gelatinous cube, you battle a few ogres, you run away from the troll. Run away from any troll you meet in first edition Dungeons and Dragons. If you meet a troll at low levels, it will kill you. Just run. Drop some drop some treasure. Throw the half hobble the halfling, throw him down, let him eat the halfling, run like hell. Run from trolls. As some good advice. And then but if you survive all that and you get your levels, you get your loot, you become fifth or sixth level, then you can start thinking about dragon hunting modern D&D &D? not so much you do all those things you go down to the dungeon you meet some orcs you fight hobgoblins and you meet the gelatinous cube and ah, you can think about fighting the troll <laughs> in 5th edition D&D &D. you know, we met trolls and at 4th level and well, we, we won we, we didn't get eaten by trolls it was a novel experience but there you are 
but once you hit fifth level, you can't suddenly think, wow, now we've made it. Hmm, dragons. Where do we get that nice Type H treasure? Not from a dragon. <laughs> He'll murder you. <laughs> Horribly. So, keep that in mind. You need to be this tall. The way up here. You need to be this tall before you can think about fighting dragons. Because otherwise, you will die. So, dragons are a very high-end encounter, which I think is one of the drawbacks of modern D&D. You don't get to do the title thing in the game until later on. You've got to play for about a year. Or level up really quickly. As, you know, they say two to three... Three sessions is a level, or should be. So that's the first two go by pretty quickly, so one to two. And then the next two, so that's four. So you buy about six sessions and you should be level four. And then it's 30 more sessions to level 14. So 35 sessions. You have to play for a year. Each week. So if you start in January or now, you'll be fighting a dragon for Christmas. That's a lot of play. Before you can even face is really a low tier dragon. I mean, if we look at the red dragon, the big daddy dragon, the capo di capo of dragons. The ancient red dragon is challenge range 24. That means he's an appropriate account for level 24 characters. And since the game only goes up to 20, you're in, shit. You're in the shit there. An adult red dragon is challenge 17. They think it's an appropriate encounter for a 17th level party of four adventurers. Ow. <laughs> you might never get there. I mean, people do get to levels 17 to 20 anyway these days. <laughs> well, maybe they all do. Maybe it's a soon. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's guaranteed and built in. That's a long time to wait before you can go fighting dragons. I mean, you can be dealing with the dragon, certainly. The dragon, you will fight the dragon's minions, you will fight his kobold, you will fight his lizard man, you will fight his dragonborn. But you can't fight the dragon itself. In a game called Dungeons and Dragons. Which is a bit of a letdown, really. I mean, I really prefer the old AD&D thing. You can... Totally fight black dragons, <laughs> almost just out the gate. And certainly fight white dragons just out the gate. You just better be rocking a cleric with resist cold. And, hey, you're set, you're fine. I mean, you know, the white dragon, where is he? He's right at the end. Oh, D4 is for attacks as well. 2D16, just watch out for that nasty bite and uh, you'll be fine. You'll mow through his six head dice in no time. 30 hit points. Uh, two, three, fi two fires and a cleric waiting on that three rounds. Go for it. What's his treasure type? E O N S. Yeah, get yourself some white dragon on you. What? <coughs> Fifth level characters? Fourth level characters? Why not? But the red dragon, uh, what's he? He rocks in at 10 hit dice, so he'll have 50 hit points. I'm a class negative one. He's, he's going to be hard to hit. And D8s for strikes. So he's a mean customer by AD&D standards. After all, AD&D characters don't get a lot of hit points. I mean, their hit points stop at level 9. they probably not got a con bonus, because you need 15 con to get even a plus 1. So you're not going to have that. And you're not going to have a strength... Probably not going to have a strength bonus either, because you need at least 17 strength to do a damage bonus, to get your damage bonus on. Maybe it was 16. Yeah, who knows? But yes, yeah, so you're going to be doing your base dice damage as well. It's gonna be a long, hard slog, and better bring, better bring a wizard with some lightning bolts. Um, put him down, and then bury the wizard. Because after the, certainly after the second lightning bolt, the dragon's gonna breathe on the wizard. If the wizard isn't shield, got a protection from fire spell on him. Well, that's one toasted wizard. But again, you're gonna be seventh, eighth, ninth level fighting a red dragon. And, yeah, some of your characters are going to die, but that was AD&D. And, and, but you could definitely fight them. You could 
go out there, you had a reasonable expectation of meeting and beating these creatures early on. You didn't have to play for a year. And, yeah, that's my summary on dragons. Dragons were nasty monsters in AD&D. And now they are top-tier boss creatures in 5th edition. So bear that in mind. If you are playing some Dungeons & Dragons, and if it says AD&D on the front, then you have a reasonable expectation of meeting some dragons after not too many play sessions. Once you've hit 5th level, you can start meeting those low-tier dragons. And someone's going to die, and... The rest of you are going to get that nice, no, nice treasure. It says fifth edition on the on the outside of the box, or oh, it just says D and D these days. Then it's going to be the focus of an entire campaign. There's going to be build up. There's going to be atmosphere, and there's going to be some sweet, sweet revenge. That is one of the good things about having these high tier dragons. He's going to be a villain for a long, long time. And when you finally kill him, when you finally get that treasure hoard, when you finally are standing on top of him, sword on, posing for the shop, it's going to mean something. They do mean something in the new newer editions. And that is good too. So, that has been my mad ramblings on dragons. Like, share, subscribe, talk about it.